You can't think of classic rock band Journey without humming that karaoke staple, Don't Stop Believing. Or other hits like Separate Ways and the slow dance song favorite Open Arms. And thanks to Don't Stop Believing being used on Glee. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. And in the final episode of The Sopranos. And how can we not mention the genius that is Rock Sugar? An entire generation rediscovered the arena rock hit makers, but the voice behind the song, Steve Perry, has been MIA for some time, both from the band that made him famous and from public life. Fans miss the artist who was so huge during the 80s, he got to sing a verse in We Are The World. So whatever happened to the singer who helped Journey hit the high notes? Let's find out. Leaving at the top. Journey's music was inescapable throughout the 70s and 80s. So what? So what? So let's dance. They toured constantly, released an album a year between 1975 and 1981, and even had their own arcade game where fans could play as members of the band, retrieving instruments in outer space. Steve Perry told GQ that he thought the game was dumb at the time, and it's hard to disagree with him, but its existence is still evidence of the band's mega popularity during their heyday. After several years of stadium tours, Journey took a much needed break. Founding member Neil Sean recorded two solo albums with Miami Vice theme song composer Yawn Hammer as Sean and Hammer, which inspired Perry to go solo for 1984's Street Talk, a smash record that included the hits Foolish Heart and Oh Sherry, which Perry wrote for his then girlfriend Sherry Swarford, who also appeared in the video. But what started as a quick breather from Journey eventually became a long-term hiatus from music. Perry first left Journey in 1987 after the last date of the supporting tour for the album Raised on Radio, an album whose recording sessions were strained by Perry's intermittent attendance due to his mother's failing health and eventual death. After years of touring and recording albums, Perry was mentally done with the band. I told him I just don't think I can do it anymore. I think I just want to stop. The band moved on to other projects for the next few years. Neil Sean and keyboardist Jonathan Kane formed the band Bad English with singer John Waite, which scored the number one Billboard hit, When I See You Smile. When I see you smile. Perry recorded a solo album called Against the Wall in 1988, but due to record label shakeups, it was never released. After eight years away from the spotlight, Perry released the solo record for The Love of Strange Medicine in 1994, where he sported some sweet 90s grunge rocker locks in the video for the single You Better Wait. Perry was back, but his return would be short-lived. The reunion tour ended before it began. Perry's Strange Medicine album attracted enough buzz that plans were made for a Journey reunion. The band got together in 1996 and recorded the album Trial by Fire, which produced the number one adult contemporary hit, When You Love a Woman. But before Journey could hit the road for a tour, Perry experienced a pain in his hip while hiking in Hawaii. All of a sudden I started having acute pain in my left side and I uh, didn't think I was going to make it off the mountain. Perry was diagnosed with degenerative bone disease and became unable to perform. Without Perry, there was no tour. And with no tour, the album quickly faded from the charts. Perry would put off getting hip surgery until 1998, but by then, the rest of the band were frustrated from waiting around for their lead singer and had moved on. Perry even received a phone call from the rest of the band advising him to go out and do whatever you want, but do not call it Journey. That was the last straw for Perry, who told music journalist Mitch LaFon, 
I don't respond well to ultimatums. It was time for Journey and Perry to go their separate ways for good. Behind the music got ugly. In 2001, members of the band were interviewed for VH1's Behind the Music, not long after releasing the modestly successful album Arrival with a new lead singer, Steve or Jerry. The show focused on the band's internal feuds and reopened some old wounds. What particularly increased the tension was Perry describing himself as an outsider in the group. I never really felt like I was part of the band. I really always felt that I was the, uh, an out the outside guy. From the perspective of the other members of Journey, Perry was a driving force of the band, so the outsider comments both hurt and made zero sense. I have no idea why he would feel that way. It's just nuts. Never felt part of the band. He was making, you know, a lot of the decisions. The band who gave us the song Lovin', Touchin', Squeezin' were now arguing, squabbling, and catfighting. Perry's permanent replacement. During the early 2000s, Journey's new vocalist, Steve or Jerry, was struggling to provide the vocal chops to take Perry's place. It was frightening going out on stage, and it was scary being compared to one of the greatest rock and roll vocalists in rock and roll history. The band was even being accused of employing pre-recorded vocals in live performances to compensate, which might be the least rock and roll thing this side of a pan flute. The remaining members of Journey needed a singer who could match Perry's iconic vocals. Miraculously, the guys in Journey found their new singer while searching for covers of their songs on YouTube. The band heard Filipino singer Anel Pineda sing their hit faithfully and were blown away by his vocal resemblance to Steve Perry. Living in poverty and paying his dues and bills. By performing with classic rock cover bands in Manila, Pineda sounded almost exactly like Perry, and so the band immediately tracked him down and hired him. Pineda, who was the subject of a 2012 documentary about his amazing uh, journey, has been humble about the gig, saying he never expected to catch the attention of one of his favorite bands. And while he hasn't actually met Steve Perry, he insists that if he ever does, he'd be in line for an autograph like any fan. Perry told Glamour that he thinks Panetta is doing great and squashed reunion rumors in 2014 by telling Fan Asylum he's their lead singer and I wish him all the best. Which is probably how you'd react if your bandmates replaced you with a sound alike. Cancer. In 2013, Steve Perry opened up on his blog about a tremendous loss he had suffered. While watching footage from the Lifetime TV special 5 about breast cancer survivors made by a friend and filmmaker Patty Jenkins, Perry was taken by Kelly Nash, a psychologist and cancer patient who made a cameo appearance in the special. Perry asked Jenkins to introduce him to Nash and after a few email exchanges, the two met and instantly fell for each other. They dated for a year and a half, but Nash's cancer spread, ultimately claiming her life. Perry himself experienced a cancer scare in 2013, undergoing surgery to remove melanoma skin cancer. Both experiences have left him a more pensive and reflective man, which doesn't always jive with a wild rock star lifestyle. Vocal fears. The past few years have seen Perry poking his head out from his self-imposed exile. He's appeared at a few Major League Baseball games, and even performed some Journey songs with indie band Eels in 2014 at their concerts in St. Paul, Minnesota, and Los Angeles. Perry is a fan of the group and performed slowed down versions of Open Arms, Faithfully, and more classic tunes. While Perry's vocals had certainly aged, the internet exploded after his return to stage. The surprise performance was well received, but there was no sign of a full-blown Steve Perry comeback. So what gives? Perry has expressed concern that after so long out of practice, his voice may not even be capable of pulling off the soaring high notes of the classic Journey tracks. Yeah. 
When a reporter from Glamour asked him in 2013 how his voice is doing these days, Steve said, it's out of shape. Meanwhile, Perry has been increasingly hinting at the release of a new album, and the last time he released a solo album, it led to a Journey reunion. But while the other members of Journey have said they'd welcome Perry back, Neil Sean told Billboard that Perry will only speak to him through an attorney. Don't stop believing, Journey fans, but also don't hold your breath. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this other cool stuff we know you'll love too.